What's up, movie True Vishmaran fans? It's me again. I'm back with another Shmoran reaction. This time it's another team's tournament match. I think this is, yeah, I think this is the round two of uh, the movie True Vishmaran team's tournament. Uh, but this time it's between Rushmore and Lightning Time. You can clearly see which side I'm on at this point. Because, I mean, obviously, I'm on John Roca's Patreon. I, I mean, I haven't met, I haven't talked to the guy in, in weeks now, but I used to regularly talk, talk to him. I used to regularly help him train. So yeah, I'm definitely in Roca's corner for about 95% of the matches he's going to play this, this season. So yeah, obviously, I'm on the Mount Rushmore side of the Schmodown, but again, this is one of the hardest uh, challenges he's going to have to uh, overcome this season. He, he said it himself, he never beat Ethan, so he, this is his shot to finally get over that hump and do that. He beat he beat Liz earlier this year after uh, me and several other of his patrons uh, helped him train f specifically for that match and we were all so happy and celebrating when he finally won, but TKO nonetheless. But uh, yeah, now he's got JTE on his side and they're both going up against Ethan Irwin, which I think JTE beat at some point. I'm not 100% sure on that. I don't remember. But uh, yeah, I'm definitely on the side of, Mark Rush of Rushmore. It's probably not going to be another TKO for the exchange. But uh, you can't, like uh, Gucci said in the last one, you can't uh, have those in every match. Okay, so uh, yeah, I'm going to sit back and watch. Obviously, I will be participating, but I mean, it's a pretty... Uh, empty threat because I'm probably not going to get any questions right at all. So, here we go. Rushmore versus Lightning Time. Here we go! Mora! Come The Brown Dwarf Star. Two-time Inner Geekdom Champion. First woman Inner Geekdom Champion. Six victory! One defeat to this guy. Brown Dwarf Star has that belt. But I've beaten her, and I've taken that belt right off her pretty little shoulders. And I'm gonna do it again. I beat him once, I will just beat him again, and we can end the argument once and for all. I love that poster so much. Everybody, welcome back to the movie trivia showdown. The team's tournament continues. It is the semifinals. Look, this tournament it started because there were a lot of uh, there were a lack of teams. There were a lack of uh, teams that had played before and had experience. That is quickly going away because we're already seeing chemistry between, especially the two teams that we have here today. But leading up to a number one contender shot against Corruption, we have the first of the two semifinal matches. The first one being the team of Lightning Time, Liz, Shannon, Miller, and the former Movie Trivia Schmodown champion, big time, Ethan Irwin, and they go up against the unlikely team of Rushmore, JTE and John Roker, former former uh, foes and now allies. So Mark Ellis, you join me here as always. Both of these teams showed different types of uh, resolve in their, um, in their first matchups. You saw the character and the the charisma and the, the back and forth of what was it going to be like with JT and Roca and they had that great TKO win over the press room yeah I what I saw experience is the headline for me for both these teams Christian because in a season that has been marked by impressive rookie performances you cannot forget about the veterans who have been here who know the ins and outs of the game the strategy the preparation and that's what you're going to see today on full display from lightning time and from Rushmore from Rushmore you're right we had no idea how Roke and JT if they could even be in the same virtual room together without getting into a fist fight they played off each other very well but what really struck me in any of these round one matches is Lightning Liz Shannon Miller and Ethan Big Timer when being able to just be seamless like butter. They've known each other for a long time and wow, their chemistry rivals our own. Well, that chemistry <laughs> and what they were able to do because they were friends and look, sometimes friends don't 
yeah, they're buddies, but who knows if they're going to play well together. They they showed that they did, and it was really what Liz Shannon Miller was able to do in that match and saying to Ethan, basically, trust me, it's blended. Let me take this. And he's like, yeah, go ahead, take it. And that also shows you a lot of tr the trust that he has in her. She hits it. They win it. They get here because they had to fight against the outsiders in order to do that. So that and there's a lot of history with with a lot with these players here. You look at JTE, his last one of his last losses in singles came to Liz Shannon Miller when they played in Liz's rookie season. So that has to be, you know, JTE, he's always looking for some kind of uh, revenge, if you will. And Liz is like, let's just play a game. Let's uh, let's get it done. Let's let because she has a loss to Roca. But when Jen asked her last week, she's like, I just want to play. I just want to have fun. I just want to make sure that we're playing this game and doing our thing. And then Ethan Irwin throws it back and says, look, I beat Roca twice before. Be blast to beat him again. <laughs> and you know that Roca is feeling the exact opposite. He wants to finally take out Ethan Irwin one way or another. So there's a lot at stake here with both of these teams. Yeah, and very different approaches maybe pre-post-match. But once you get them in the arena, you're going to see some Stone Cold Assassins. Because look, JT and Roca, their emotions are well on their sleeves. For Lightning Liz and for Ethan, sometimes it's simmering a little bit below the surface. But as soon as the questions start flying, their competitive drive kicks in. And it rivals anyone that we've ever seen in the movie Trivia Schmodown. The veteran experience dates back some decades and maybe <laughs> Eric Nerd Chronic, our incredible editors, put together a promo that features John Roca's first appearance on the Ed Sullivan Show, where the movie <laughs> Trivia Schmodown debuted. Let's take a look. Oh, nice. If this sets the tone for how this team's tournament is going to go, oh, man, are people in for a treat. You know, I beat Roker twice, so, you know, happy to do it for a third time. Well, here we are again. It's me versus John Stephen Roca. Ethan Irwin, Liz Shannon Miller. Well, I already took care of Liz Shannon Miller, TK Oder, to start off the season and send a message to everybody about the Finstock Exchange. And now here I come face to face with a man I've played so many times, but been unable to beat in the Schmodown. I have beat John Roca every time I play him. He's got JTE, so who knows what's gonna happen. But I got a partner too, Liz Shannon Miller. Look, we all saw how round one went, okay? Lightning time, they're here to play. I don't know if Liz is gonna be a good partner for either. Boom, shut your mouth. She carried us, so I'm gonna pull my weight this time, and uh, I think it's gonna be a pretty good time. You know, the last time I played somebody who I hadn't beaten Ever, I took them to a live event and then beat them, and now that man's riding by my side as my partner on Rushmore. You never know who is gonna be put in your path for what reason. I feel confident me and Roga could beat any team that we face. They're no strangers to the movie trivia Schmodown, but Ethan Literally. and Liz are on a mission, and this is just the second round of that mission. People still doubting us after that TKO. Well, we're looking to handle business against lightning time. Because you know the one thing JT and I want as multiple time tag team champions is to get those belts back on our shoulders. Let the whole Swanown world get ready. Because Rushmore is coming. John, coming for you one more time. Lightning time is going to strike again. Uh, like we said, a lot of history, a lot of talk, a lot at stake, because this is also a big match for both the Finstock Exchange and the usual suspects. This is three big points. Again, trying to get to those finals, which would be four points if they could get there. And, and again, another potential four points should they get to the, that number one contender match with corruption. So there's a lot on the line here for both factions, both managers. I'm ready to get going. How about you, partner? Let's not get delusions of grandeur. Both teams know they got to get through today's match, and that is what's going to be on their mind. Let's get it on, partner. Ladies, Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen it's, it's time, time for the movie, movie trivia, trivia showdown. 
Introducing first, representing the usual suspects with a record of one win, no defeats. Lightning, Liz, Shannon Miller, and big time Ethan Irwin. Lightning time. Lightning time is here, and Liz, I got to start with you. That match that you guys had together, and we talked about it in the post, but the amount of trust that the two of you had, um, you know, being able to play with Ethan, does that take you into more comfort zone getting into a match like this against JT and Roca? I mean, it's just great to know he's in my corner, and, you know, like, as always, it's the questions, really, you're playing, but it's you know, knowing that we'll be we'll we'll be working together entirely on round two and partly in round three, like that that makes round one feel a lot more relaxed to me. Yeah, and Ethan, as you kick back from your studio apartment in Toledo, Ohio, you hear Christian talk about still where here. you could go with this team. You certainly have I the potential to the win Ohio this joke. tournament to get that what number is, one contender shot to that? possibly hoist a belt again do you get any of those visions dancing in your head like sugar plums around the holidays or do you and liz when you talk just focus on the next match i think definitely you know that's always somewhere in the back of our minds but i i remember you know from before it really is something if you think about it too much it can, it can really kind of overtake your thoughts so certainly taking it one match at a time and i will say this you know look liz beat jt I beat Roka twice, three times technically if you count like the three-way with him and Bibiani. So I'm not super concerned. And, and I'll say this also, you know, the thing about Rushmore is this. Yes, it is built on legends. Every face up there is a legend. But also, every face up there is old and dead. So <laughs> make of that what you will. Well, with that, well, the team of, of Lightning, Lightning Road, Time, Liz Shannon He's Miller, old. Ethan Irwin, ready to take on the old dead guys. All right, here we go. And, and their, their opponents, opponents. Representing, representing the, the Finstock Exchange. Exchange. With a record, record of, of one, one win, win, no defeats, defeats and one knockout. knockout. They are the team of the former movie trivia showdown team champion, Little Evil J.T. E. And the former two-time movie trivia showdown team champion, the former two-time movie trivia showdown champion of the world, John the Outlaw Ruka. This is the Woo! team of Rushmore, both Beautiful, JTE baby. and Roka. So there's that dance again. This is two all weeks in a row. All the single champs. All the single champs. All the single <laughs> champs. All the single champs. I love it. JTE is not a single champ. JTE, but never mind. I know you, and I know that you're always looking for some kind of revenge, one way or another. I know it sticks in your car about uh, Liz Shannon Miller. I yeah. know that when she beat you last time, you know, that was in her rookie season. It was a big win for her. So how is it now going up against both Ethan and Liz? You know, I always want to play the best players. So I'm excited to finally get in the ring with Ethan. Uh, Liz, I agree with you. I think maybe the game didn't quite play to me the way it does in the past. Some of those questions I got against her were pretty rough. Listen, we are Rushmore. We are up there in the sky. You look up and you see the legends. These two haven't done anything yet. If we're Rushmore, they're that giant ball of yarn that you see in somewhere in like Iowa or something that's like off the highway and sells little hats and newspapers and little pamphlets. They're they're not even close to being to what we are, Rushmore. So I, it's hard to take them too seriously, but the second you don't respect your opponent in this game is when you lose. I respect them both enough to beat them. All right, Outlaw, the question for yeah. you is this. It's a team's match, but you heard Ethan, and Ethan, not shy about reminding folks about – your and his history together. So how do you make sure that Ethan is the Detroit Pistons to your Chicago Bulls when you're finally able to topple him and then seal your run at a championship? I got to be honest with you. I was meditating that I didn't hear a damn word he had to say. You know, people who live on past glories are people who live in the past. This is the present. Live in the present. Any meditation teacher worth his, worth his or her salt will tell you that. Live in the present. 
This match has not been played. The questions have not been answered. We have no idea who's going to win. So it's toe to toe. Whatever happened in the past happened in the past. I'm focused on the present and in the future. That's what I'm all about. So let him say what he needs to say. It's irrelevant to me. We come to play. Do we know the answers or do we not? And as JT just said, be bad to look over, overlook your opponent. I respect both of them, and let's get it on. Well, well, John, I do have to say, you just, you're mentioning the past here, and it, I have to ask because it seems like there's always some kind of thing in the past whenever you play Sam Levine. Um, yeah. Any words for Sam going into this match, knowing that, you know, you've got this? Nah, not really. Let's wow. go. All right. Well, I'm sure that uh, Sam's actually probably pretty shocked. He, he is. <laughs> All right, lightning time has arrived. Mark, they are here. What are the rules around number one? Yes, we have rules, and thank goodness for that. This is a team match, which means eight questions in round number one. These questions will be asked to the field. They're from eight different corners of movie trivia, Schmodown Know How. Each question is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round number one. We'll ask the question. You have about 15 seconds to get that correct answer onto whatever writing surface you prefer. Again, it's a team format, but round number one is an individual exercise of trivia know-how. So you may not rely on the strength of your teammate to get a correct answer in round number one. Each team has three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the match, named for one of these people in these windows. If you're not sure you heard a question right, you want to buy yourself another 15 seconds to get that correct answer that's probably going to be misspelled in someone's case, use the JTE rule. You also each have one challenge as a squad you may use at any point throughout the three-round match. You can initiate the challenge. We'll bring managers in. You may delineate to your heart's content. We'll hear arguments, and ultimately it will be your manager confirming and ratifying that said challenge is taking place. Those are the rules, Christian. And with that, to avoid any challenges up front, I am being told that, yes, Roka is correct. This match has not been played yet. And also, Ethan is correct. Unfortunately, Teddy Roosevelt is Just no did. longer with us. Uh, just a reminder to everybody who is watching. First of all, thank you for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the alert. The alert button. Make sure you get notifications when that comes in for every match that we do, all the daily content. Hit that button now. Make sure you do it and let the English see you do it. All right. So now. Also, if you leave a comment down below, tell people how much you enjoyed this match. All of that is important. Thank you, John Rocker. All right. So we asked the team of, first of all, JTE, are you ready? Yeah, let's do this. Roker, are you ready? I'll follow my brother's lead. Let's do this. Liz, are you ready? Yeah. Ethan? Always be closing. Then let's, let's get, get ready, ready to show down. Round number one. Question number one. We're going to start with directors. Oh, boy. Which directors. famous filmmaker made his feature directorial debut with the 1974 drama The Sugarland Express? All four features are writing down here, Mark. Look at these legends, Christian. I mean, we got four legends here, and they're hanging out with us. Why? Well, I don't know. I can't. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. We start with JTE. Uh, Steven Spielberg. Yes. Ethan. Really? Wow. Steven Spielberg. I went with Scorsese. Wow. Steven Spielberg. I didn't know and that list. was his debut. Steven Spielberg. Okay. We're all tied Steven up. Spielberg. And we're going to start with question. We're going to get with question number two here, Mark. Yes, we are, and that is in the category of famous actors and actresses. If you think their work is good, you should look at their bank account. <laughs> Your question for a point, which actress appeared in the films, just to go with it, rumor has it, and Bruce Almighty? Out of those three movies, Christian, how many did you see at the talking pictures, at the cinemas, at the multiplex? Can, I can't remember. Mm, I think one for me. <clears throat> Two. I can't remember the... One from five, Bruce five, Almighty. four, three, 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 two, two, one. Pens down, please. Ethan Irwin. Jennifer Aniston? Yes. She wasn't Bruce Almighty? Jennifer Aniston? You you read froze? That? Uh, oh. Yes, now we can. I was going to answer uh, Jennifer Liz. Aniston, but I couldn't remember if she was in Jennifer Bruce Almighty. Aniston. And Little Evil. Jennifer Aniston. Wow. Four, four, as we get to question Bruce number the, three. Bruce this Bruce is Almighty thing Oscars. really threw me off. Robert Duvall received a Best Supporting Actor nomination for which 2014 courtroom drama that starred Robert Downey Jr.? Uh, I love a good courtroom drama, you know. Yeah. 
I don't know if court actually works like that. If they do in the movies, son-in-law. Oh, it, it totally does. Five, it's built. It's a total drama-based system. Three, really two, <laughs> one. Mark saw what I did there. And Oops. pens down, please. And we start here with John Roca. The judge. Yes, Liz. Yeah, that's what I wrote, wrote down, but you know. Froze, yeah. But we got it. Yeah, I saw it. I saw it. Okay, I, JT. I get, uh, the judge. Time. And Ethan. Still, if I had a JTE, I would have gotten it. Absolutely. So, yeah, okay, 6-6. Six, six. Good start here for both teams as we're now going to get to question what? four more. Both Jennifer outfits Anderson, still perfect. And we move to the category of action slash adventure. <laughs> and the question, the which action franchise game. features Bruce Willis, Sienna Miller, Channing Tatum, and Joseph Gordon-Levitt? franchise I, I thought that was a thinker but uh it seems like folks are writing that one down pretty quickly so far five four three two one hands down hands up please we start this time with Liz. death wish gi joe yes oh, jt no, uh, gi joe sense. ethan gi joe and and with the outlaw gi joe son what a spot here. 8-8. Eight, 8-8 eight. Eight, eight as we now get to question 5. Question 5 in the realm of mystery. Taylor Sheridan wrote and directed which 2017 film starring Jeremy Renner and Elizabeth Olsen who are trying to solve a murder on a Native American reservation? All right, Christian. I'm going to set you up here. Yeah. See if you can dunk this. All right. That last answer. They knew it and... Five, four. Get two shots. Three, two. <laughs> no one's happened. One. Battle. Pens down. Hands up, please. And we start with JTE. Uh, Wind, River. Wind River. Yes, Ethan. Wind River. Roca. Wind River. And Liz. Frozen River didn't have it. Mm. All right. Ouch. Ten nine. Ten nine. Rushmore now. It's one so point here. So frustrating to miss uh, one lead, and we word. Go to the next question. It's question so six. annoying. That's in the category of comedies. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take everything I can get for a point. Who stars as a rock and roll singer named Nick Rivers in the 1984 spoof comedy Top Secret? Speaking of no, Rivers, you love this question. Uh, just I sing maybe speed surfing all the time. Top five funniest movies ever, <laughs> possibly. Five. Let's not get out of hand. Four. Three. Two. One. Pens down. Hands up, please. And we start with Ethan Irwin. Val Kilmer. Yes, sir. John Roca. Val Kilmer. Liz. An infant named Val Kilmer. Yes. And <laughs> he is so young in that movie. He sure is. JTE. Mm -hmm. Val Kilmer. 12-11. One point lead there by Rushmore. Uh, at the moment, we are at question seven with JT, Roca, and Irwin. Perfect at the moment. Family films. Oh, boy. Paul yeah. Hogan and Elijah Wood star in which 1996 family adventure film about a boy who has to spend the summer with his uncle in Florida only to make an unusual friend? Uh, there's just so many great lines. Driver, where are we? This isn't the Howard Johnsons. They'd have enough salt to last forever. It's, just, it's a perfect comedy. Five, four, <laughs> three, two, one. Hands down, hands up, please. We start with Roca. I no clue. Uh, Liz, I'm taking a wild guess at Radio Flyer. That's incorrect. JTE, that would be uh, Flipper. That is correct. Oh, so flipper. 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 flipper, really? Uh, so only nice. Ethan and JTE staying perfect nice. here. So 13, 12, 13, 12. JTE and Ethan still perfect going into the final question. Question okay. eight. That's Whatever. right. If it's a question involving Paul Hogan, it probably involves an animal that enjoys water. Your final question in round number one is in the category of fantasy science fiction. Mm. For one point, Dennis Quaid, Meg Ryan, and Martin Short appear in what 1987 sci-fi comedy from director Joe Dante? So this is going to be interesting here in order to for... Rushmore to keep their lead. JTE yeah. has to get this one right if Ethan gets his right. Mm -hmm. And five, four, three. Repeat the question, please. Second one. Oh, first one. Excuse me. First one. Uh, fantasy sci-fi's category. The question: Dennis Quaid, Meg Ryan, and Martin Short 
all appear in what 1987 sci-fi comedy from director Joe Dante? Good question to round out a sterling round number one performance, really by all four competitors here, Christian. It's been a but great match so far. Been exactly the match we thought. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, please. Liz, we'll start with you. This isn't it, but it, no empty boards. Flight of the Navigator. That is incorrect. <laughs> great movie, though. Uh, JTE. That would be Joe Dante's Inner Space. And JTE goes perfect. Does Ethan go perfect as well? Inner Space. He Ooh. does. And John Roca. Inner Space. Roca hits it. Okay, it's a okay, shockingly gruesome film for kids' movie. <laughs> Damn 15, you, Paul Hogan. Damn you, Joe, Paul Hogan. Joe Dante. 15-13. 15-13. So... Now, only well, JTE please. and Ethan will be answering these questions. Now, you do have to write on the board because mm -hmm. both. Yep. All right. So here we go. Guys, are you ready, JTE? Yep. Oh. Ethan, are you ready? We'll get him, brother. Continue right. to always be closing. All right. Here we go. Still closed. Which music star plays the protagonist, Will Salas, in the 2011 sci-fi film, In Time? Right, let's start writing, and Roka just really Taking hates I, know, I, I knew this one at least. Yeah. Five. <laughs> four. Guess. Three. Liz, you knew two, the one. JT. One. Hands down. Hands down. Hands up. We start with JTE. Is it uh, Justin Timberlake? It is. And Ethan? Justin Timberlake. So let's perfect go. rounds all the way through nice with job, the bonus for JTE and Ethan. And Rushmore sees himself with a two-point lead going into well round. Well played, Ethan. Well played. Number two. All right, round two. Mark, what are the rules around number two? This is the wheel round. We don't have the kind of money to ship a wheel all over the place, so it's a virtual wheel. Each team will spin it with their mind. Once they settle on a category of movie trivia, schmodown know-how, they will hear five questions. Nope, let's make it six questions from that particular <laughs> genre. This is round number two, so the teams may confer amongst their members for each and every question. We do ask that once you arrive at your answer attempt, please say final answer when you usher it. If you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. The question is born a two-pointer. When you go to multiple choice, it turns in to a one-pointer. And that's important because stealing it's available in round number two. And because it is the team format, whatever team is not currently fielding their set of questions will be in a different stream where they have no idea what questions are being asked or how they're being answered. If there are any steal opportunities at the completion of the set of questions, we will bring back the other team and they will field them at that juncture. So Christian Rushmore is living up to their bold mountain and they have a two-point lead over lightning time. So Rushmore, JT, John Roca, would you like to spin the wheel first or defer to your opponents? What do you say, Roca? Do we pour it on here? Spin yeah. first? Yeah, hell yeah. That's what we decided we'll on. We'll spin it. We'll spin it. Got there he is. What yes. happened to nice Gucci? Work. Perfect again, per the usual. Let's spin and put these guys away. Let's air them out. Oof. All right, sounds good. Yeah, please, that is brutal. I like him. Get, I like get him. him. It sounds like he's, he's in heaven. Look Are at you that doing makeup? Him. Is he getting makeup done? What's I love it. <laughs> Man, is, where, where's your Where's your microphone? All right, forget it. We can't hear him. This is terrible. <laughs> Let's get the wheel going. Yeah, please. Just good, keep on. Don't, don't even schedule him anymore. Here is the. <laughs> here Easy, is the nice. Spin. Come on, baby. Be good to us. Be good to us. Come on. <laughs> round and round it goes. Spinner's opponent's choice lurking on there, and they might have lucked into the 2000. What do you think, brother? <laughs> yeah, I, I, there's things on here I like less, so 2000s. I feel strong. You feel good? Okay. okay. All right. Let's take a chance. Let's go. We'll take two thousand. All right, Mark. So the team of Lightning Time has moved to the other room, and both managers are here, and we are going to start here with the 2000s. We'll start with this. All right, gentlemen. You'll find the supporting characters of Ned Schneebly, Rosalie Roz Mullins, and Summer Hathaway in what 2003 comedy? Excuse me? Ned Schneebly sounds really familiar, Roka. Does that sound familiar? No, not at all. I'm lost on this one, man. Summer Hathaway? Is, that, is, is this something more or something like that? No. Do you want to go to multiple uh, choice? Let's, let's get a repeat. Four. Just okay, repeat. Mm -hmm. All right, repeat first one. You'll find the supporting characters of Ned Schneebly, 
Rosalie Roz Mullins, and Summer Hathaway in what 2003 comedy? First. Who invented these names? I know there's a Roz in uh, Monsters, Inc. Would that? No? I don't think so, no. I think we should go multiple on this one because I don't feel super confident. Multiple choice. All right. Is it A, Freaky Friday, B, School of Rock, C, Old School, D, Bruce Almighty? It's, I'm pretty sure it's B, Roka. Okay. You feel good with that? Yeah, let's go. Uh, we'll go B, School of Rock. Final answer. Final answer? Okay, that is correct for one point. Nice job, bud. All right, here is question two. Who plays the lead guitarist for Stillwater, Russell Hammond, in Almost Famous? Uh, that's Billy Crudup, because the singer is what's-his-face, right? I, I agree with you, Roka. Go with it. Okay. Billy Crudup, final answer. That's correct for two points. All right, here is the next question and next question. All right, here you go. Okay. Who plays the, uh, excuse me? Who plays Terry Polo's wealthy ex fiance Kevin, in Meet the Parents? Uh, oh, this Wilson. is Owen Wilson. Yeah. yeah. Let's go. go, Owen Wilson, final answer. Correct for two more points. All right, here you go. Which Academy Award winning actor stars as Goldthwaite Higson, Higginson Dorr, PhD, the leader of the heist in 2004's The Lady Killers? Oh, that's Tom Hanks. Yeah, it's got to be Tom Hanks. Right. Yeah, go ahead. Tom Rick. Hanks, final answer. That is correct. Yeah. More okay. points. Didn't know if you were right. doing that. Here is the next one. Which 2007 film starring Joseph Gordon Levitt, Jeff Daniels, and Isla Fisher follows? or Ela Fisher follows a group of bank robbers who try to trick a janitor into being an accomplice on a heist. I got this, Rocky. You know, you see me. It's the lookout. It's the lookout, right? No. Nope. Is that what yeah, you had? Sure. Sounds good. Yep. yep. The lookout. Final answer. That is correct for two more points. Oh, I thought Ooh. you were you see me. All right. Here is the weird. final question. Million Dollar Baby. Which MCU actor plays Sharrell Berry? Was an overzealous boxer and frequent tenant of Dunn's gym. Anthony Mackie, right? Yeah, the Falcon himself. Go for Go ahead, it. Brother. Go ahead, brother. Uh, you say it just so you pronounce it correct. Yeah, All Anthony right. Mackie, final answer. Correct for two more points. So nice. big, big round there for the team of Rushmore, who only have to go to multiple choice once and find Rushmore. themselves up now 27 14. Sammy got 60 seconds. Guys! I think I had to be silent for so long. I love what you did in that first round. That was sensational. Sensational. No looking away, Liz. You crushed it, okay? That was a great first round. I'm so proud of you guys. I love that you brought the energy and the teamwork from your last round right into this one, okay? The other team, they, they had a pretty decent round, too. It would be kind of hard not to with those, but they did a very good job, and I know you guys are going to do the exact same thing. So just talk it out, use that wonderful reasoning, that teamwork that you guys have, and just put together the round two that I know you both have inside. How do you, how do you feel? How's that beer? It's good. Uh, can I tell you something? It's actually, it's a, it's a, it's a non alcoholic You were right. You were right, Alice. It's a non-alcoholic IPA. Oh, okay. Because it's daytime. Ten, because ten it's daytime. Ten, it's daytime your sister, right. man. Don't, it, don't waste your time with that. What is the point of a non-alcoholic IPA? Like, I mean, just sorry. Just a trick. I agree with you. And great way to end it there with Liz. That's time. And here is the spin by Lightning Time. Yeah, mine was non-alcoholic last night, but it might have had some other fun in it. (laughs) Did I know it's be true? All right. They got to avoid opponent's choice here, Christian. Oh, and they nail opponent's choice. Great. Opponent's choice. That's what we wanted, so it's fine. (laughs) Uh, What do you think, Roka? What do you think? Uh, there's a lot of places to go here. I well, feel like he's classics. finally wearing a mask. What do you think there, uh, uh, Tom? I don't know. <laughs> Solid. Solid. Uh, Solid. I, I agree with you, Rogue. I think that? classics is pretty good. Okay. Classics? Yeah, the classics could know. go a number of classics. different directions. Hmm. Uh, uh, I mean, we could go what Nicolas Cage and mess around. I with would things, say or, or monster, monster movies monster. for them, but. No, I, I don't. Ooh, how about, I, I how about Star, Star Trek? Trek? I think Star Ethan Trek or Pixar. Trek, so let's not do that. Sorry, like, everyone's think... cutting out. Yeah, okay. 
Yeah, he, can you, Christian, can you hear me? Everyone's cutting out. I can hear you. It's just, it's okay. just that, you know, he screws up everything he does. All right. <laughs> what do you say, JT? Should we give him classic? Class? Go classics. All right, we'll go classics. Take our chances. All right, so the team of Lightning Time is ready to go. Opponent's choice. The opponents gave them classics. All right, team. So here is your first question. Mark, take it away. All right. Six in total. Each one worth two points, unless you need multiple choice, such as this one in the category of classics. Who directed? 1954's White Christmas, starring Bing Crosby. Um, I would. It's called. Isn't it called Irving Berlin's White Christmas? Yeah, that's a reference to the musical. I think we need to get multiple choice oh. on it. Very well. I mean, multiple choice, please. Multiple choice. Multiple choice. Is final answer for four <laughs> options and one point. A. Frank Capra. B. George Cooker. C, Billy Wilder, or D, Michael Curtis? Those are some heavy hitters. Billy Wilder. I think Wilder it's, I think it's B. Is in, oh, repeat the options, please. I can do that once uh, without fear of JT rule. Is it A, Frank Capra, B, George Cooker, C, Billy Wilder, or D, Michael Curtis? I'm pretty sure I, it's a George Cooker. Agreed. George Cooker, final answer. That is incorrect. Okay. So okay. that will be a steal it's opportunity. That's a better guess than I knew. <laughs> All right, here's question, here's question two. Question two. All right, because they're in the other stream, we were actually looking for Michael Curtis. Oh. That was good my second guess. For two points, what 1937 film starring Janet Gaynor had multiple remakes, which starred Judy Garland, Barbara Streisand, and Lady Gaga? A yeah, Star is Born. A Star is Born, final, final answer. answer. Yeah. That is correct, and they are on the board in round number two. Christian, Finally, in the category of classics, we continue to your third query. Who plays aging outlaw Pike Bishop in 1969's The Wild Bunch? I believe that's William Hurt, right, Ethan? William Holden. William Holden. Thank yeah. you. William yeah. Hurt, yeah. surprisingly yeah. enough, William would be who got forgotten. Yeah, final answer. <laughs> that is correct for two points, unlike our outlaw, that's, who's yeah. ageless. Yeah, that's and the first time William Hurt getting into four points, something. and now looking to make it six in round number two. Their fourth question. What 1957 live-action Disney film has a title character who is called the best doggone dog in the West in the film? I think we're going to have to go to multiple choice for that one. Yeah, let's do that. No, All right, your options for one point. Is it A, Savage Sam, B, Old Yeller, C, Big Red, or D, The Shaggy Dog? I'm not sure Old Yeller was 57, I, though. I, I, I would go with A or C, either. I don't think it's Shaggy Dog. Big Red sounds right, but maybe that's because it's a Blake Shelton song. Uh, and what was A? I'm, I'm guessing Savage Sam. Answers again? Or does JT, yeah. if you can't yeah. For a JTE rule, I can I can do that. So I'll repeat the question as well. What 1957 live action Disney film has a title character who is called the best doggone dog in the West in the film? And your options is it A. Savage Sam, B. Old Yeller, C. Big Red, or D. The Shaggy well, Dog? Savage Sam has. I feel like Savage Sam title. might be it. I'll go yeah, with that. So I yeah, truly Savage have no Sam. idea. So that sounds good to me. Actually. Yeah, Savage Sam yeah. final yeah, they answer. They said title character, so Savage Sam makes sense. It's incorrect. We're actually looking for Old Yeller, the heartbreaker it that it is. Old Yeller? Really? Right, it's going to break Old Yeller, breaking my heart again and again. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of what that dog does. All right, yeah, we've that, arrived at your penultimate kind of question is. in the category mm -hmm. of classics, and it is, for two points, what was the title of the first feature film starring The Beatles? It would be a hard day's night. I would assume so. That has to predate Yellow Submarine. So, yeah, I, I agree. A, a hard day's night. Final answer. Final answer. And I've been working like any dog not named Old Yeller. Yes, that is correct for two points, a much-needed two points. So, Christian, here's where we stand. Lightning Time currently trailing by seven. They can cut that lead to a much more manageable five points going into round number three if they can hit this last question in the category of classics. Here it is. 1962's The Longest Day depicts an epic day of combat during which war? I know the answer to this one. Go it's for it. World War II, final answer. Really? 
Your final answer is correct, I and was, World War II gets you two that. points. It is I 27 to 22. So now we're uh, going to welcome I guess back since I'm fighting the for team of Rushmore here, for two steel opportunities. I was going to guess World War II. All right, gentlemen. So you have two steel opportunities on the table, both for one point. So Mark is going to give you the question and the multiple choice and tell you what your opponents chose incorrectly. Are you ready for your first one? Yes. Yep. All right, Mark, go ahead. All right, the category is classics, the question, and I will also give your options for a point. Who directed 1954's White Christmas starring Bing Crosby? Your options. Is it A, Frank Capra, B, George Cooker, C, Billy Wilder, or D, Michael Curtis? Your opponents guessed George Cooker. Michael hmm. Curtis. I, I totally knew Michael that. Michael Curtis is the answer here. Go for it. Yeah. Uh, yep. Can I hear the options again? Is that count as once. a repeat? You okay. get, it's, it's once. Sorry. You can do it for once. And your options for one point. Is it A, Frank Capra, B, George Cooker, C, Billy Wilder, or D, Michael Curtis? Your opponents guessed George Cooker. Uh, D, Michael Curtis, final answer. That is correct for a point, and now that lead goes up to six, and to make it seven, possibly, here is the other steal opportunity for Rushmore at the hands of lightning time. For one point, your question and your multiple choice options, what 1957 live-action Disney film has a title character who is called the best doggone dog in the West in the film? Your options, is it A, Savage Sam, B, Old Yeller, C, Big Red, or D, The Shaggy Dog. Your opponents guessed Savage Sam. It's Old Yeller, <laughs> final answer. Um, <sighs> could it be Shaggy Dog? That was a Disney movie. Yeah, but I don't 57 think... is... Pre I think Old Yeller is the answer, bud. You think so? Hey, yeah. if that's your feeling, go for it. All right, Old Yeller, final Old. answer. John Roca proving he's been on the earth a little longer than JTE. That is correct for a <laughs> Thank point. You. Good job, Roca. Seven points there is the lead go. going into round three. Opponent's Let's choice go. and the category seem to work for them as they now have a seven-point lead going into round number three. We're going to bring back the team of Lightning Time. All right, Mark, so our competitors are here. And now let's get to the rules of round number three. The rules of round number three, the round that will determine the match. Each team is going to field some questions, three in total. Your first question is worth two points. Your next one is worth three points. Your final question is worth five gigantic points. Here's how we get those questions from you, in a sense. Each team is going to give us a series of numbers. These numbers may range from one to 20. You may not pick the same numbers as your opponent because each numeral does correspond to a unique category of movie, trivia, schmodown, mystery except they're probably not all the category of mystery movies. Once we give you the category for your two-point question, the team must decide which member is going to field that question solo. You may not rely on your teammate, nor can your teammate rely on you for then the three-point question that follows. You may only confer with your teammate for the five-point question. It is up to Rushmore now, because they have the right to give us their three lucky numbers first. From 1 to 20, what feels fortunate, gentlemen? Go ahead, JT. Uh, start with 13. 8. And you want me to take the third, Roger? Yeah, take the third let's, one. Let's go 19. Okay. All right, so 13, 8, and 19. All right, so now we go to lightning time. Uh, do you want to do what we did last time, Ethan? Let's, yeah, let's do it. All right, 15, 16, and 17. 15, 16, and 17 for the team of lightning time. Mm -hmm. Jerome, yeah. you just talk oh. to JT for six minutes. Coach! Seconds. What's up, brother, man? Can you hear us, Tom? Yeah, I, 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 yes, I can hear you guys. Oh, maybe not. I'm in and out, but I feel good. Look, we're yeah. in the driver's seat. Tom, Let's please go horizontal. Way. Another bump in the road here. <laughs> the bump. It's a bumpy road. I'll give him that. Road. That's for <laughs> sure. Change like this. He's frozen. All right. Sorry. I think we're good. Yep. <laughs> okay, I think you feel good? We're in the driver's seat? Yeah. Yep. Don't worry. Love you're, it. You're, go uh... ahead. Let's get it. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. We got it. Thanks, Tom. We got it. Crushing it. <laughs> All right, 60 seconds. Oh, wow. Thanks for at least being here, Sam. That's really you nice know what? You. My my absolute pleasure. And you know, I, I I could block off the rest of the screen if you want me in vertical. Listen. Yeah. Um, you guys know what you have to do now. You got to have a killer round three. Okay. Between the two of them, between JT and Roca, there are more botched round threes than on Nip Tuck. That doesn't really work. <laughs> You guys know what I'm saying. Hey, yeah. okay. Nip Tuck. These guys have both, had, 
epic meltdowns in round three, and there's no reason they can't do it again now. So what you got to do is just keep the pressure on them and go perfect. And I know that you can do that. So that's all you got to do. And I believe that you can do it. And then once you do that, out of our hands. Then it's all about Jew bears and Geppettos. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you to Art Sam. Has the one JTE left. All right. Use it if yeah. you need it. All right, Mark, our teams are here, and Lightning Time will be going first to try to avoid the TKO. Uh, they chose Category 15. That starts with the realm of new releases. Oh, that's it an does, and so between Ethan and Liz, who would like to field that question solo for two points? I'm going to try it? Yeah, do it. You did it last time. You did a great job. Okay. All right, we'll see. Maybe not. All right, your question for two points to corrected. Lightning Liz Shannon Miller. What former wrestler plays the lead role in the film My Spy? James Bautista. James Bautista, yeah. That is correct, and Lightning Why Time is I on the board Dave's in round Bautista. number three, Christian. What is wrong they with are. me? And now they chose category 15, 16 for their three, so 16 is going to put them in fantasy sci-fi, fantasy sci-fi okay ethan you have your three-point question again this is for you and only you to add three points to your team's ethan. total and to pull to within two of rushmore's lead your question saoirse ronan jake abel and max irons star in this 2013 young adult adaptation science fiction thriller the host yeah, the Oscars could use one of those. That is correct for three <laughs> points. And Christian, it is just a two-point ball game. Lightning time can confer on their five-pointer. And if they hit it, they're going to first rush more to answer at least one correct question. Yeah, this or is a big one a for them because they're is, avoiding the potential negative one should they do it and stay in the game. Should they hit their five-pointer, they chose category 17, Mark. We're going to start talking about some directors. That's right. They do this a lot. And... Your question, which you may confer with your teammate four for five points, and more importantly, to take a three-point lead. How many Kevin Smith films has Ben Affleck appeared in? We're going to give you 20 seconds. I'm guessing it's Let's do it. So you got Mara. Chasing Amy. Mara. Yep. Um, appeared in? James okay, James Bob, Jersey, um, Girl. Jersey Girl. I think he's he's in uh, he's in James Bob's uh, reboot. Yep. That's so five. That's five. That sounds right. Five. I'm trying to think of no, other six, movies. Six, six, Dogma. 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 Three, Dogma six. Two. Yeah. One. Six final answer. Six, six final answer. And your winners! Yeah! By way of technical knockout! J.D. Seven. Seven. Wow. Seven. Wow. Moritz, so Chasing Amy, Dogma, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, Jersey Girl, Clerks 2, Clerks two. Jay That's what they and forgot. Silent oh, Bob Reboot. Clerks. That was Clerks. it. So Rushmore, big TKO victory here, picking up not only a TKO for the Finstock Exchange, negative one there for the usual suspects. Minus All right, guys, one! Congratulations. We're going to put you in the waiting room as you wait yes, to talk sir. to Ben Sturger. I don't necessarily know if we need Dagnino, but look, uh, Rushmore <laughs> is is scary. You know, like that's that's two that's two straight victories. First one was was a TKO, and now being able to TKO, TKO the press room TKO, TKO, coming TKO, out of that TKO, first TKO, match, like okay, you know, they, they did what they were supposed to do there. Doing that against Liz and Ethan, that's a tougher task. So by doing that, you have to you know what it's very interesting now, and I know Jen's going to get into this as well, but. Uh, we're waiting for a big outcome tomorrow. You've got the team at Danger Zone, Dan Merle, Ben Bateman, going up against Adam Collins and the Marisol Vince McKee. TKO that is a massive matchup in general. Either iteration again. tomorrow, but you know, you know Rushmore is, is pulling for uh, for Danger Zone. At least you would think. 
You would think simply because it seems as though Rushmore has a list, Christian, and they are determined to get revenge on anyone and everyone that has ever wronged them. And this is them competing at such a high level without really the aid of a manager that is functional, Present. at least. And maybe that's actually helping them given who their manager is. But either way, a super impressive victory over an incredible team that got saddled with opponent's choice classics and they didn't have a bad round number two they just mm. simply couldn't muster the strength of what rushmore was able to do on this day yeah this was a this is totally strategy here today and this shows you two players who've been playing for a long time and in teams in both roca and jt they strategized and they maneuvered their way into it and they got lucky obviously with with opponent's choice and they used it to their advantage so this it was a good first round for all for both teams and for Rushmore, they're moving on. So Jen Sturger is with at least Roca and JTE. Um, and we're going to find out what the hell's going on with them in just a moment. Oh, thank God you're horizontal. Oh. <laughs> there he is. It was starting That's to feel a little found footage to me. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Anyways, congratulations, gentlemen. I feel like this is a statement win for the two of you because let's face it a lot of people had questions about how your team chemistry would work i feel like we've addressed that and it's not it's a non-issue uh and i just feel like jte you're playing at a level of the game that we have not seen from you in a long time i mean how are you guys feeling after this win listen this is why i came back this is why i decided to come back and show everybody what they've been missing and what I'm capable of. <laughs> Again, out of sight, out of mind. I don't, this is what I've always been. And to come back and fight these opponents and beat them and TKO them, I would like to play around three at some point. <laughs> I would like to answer around three points. I mean, I practice them all the time. Let me, let's actually get to one once in a while. But listen, we're just, that we're taking true. wins. Roka, you seem uh, to be yeah, having, guys, you seem to really be well. having, you seem to be having the most fun you've ever I'm had to play. Guess I will say that. Jen's you know, share. at the end of last season, you seemed frustrated. You seemed kind of down on the game. Something. And now it's, uh, it's like, I don't know. You just seem to be having what a good old time. Well, Jen, you know what it's like when you find the perfect partner. You try other partners. It doesn't quite work out. Just like your love life. It doesn't quite work out. And then you find that one that puts all the pieces together. Who knew that it was JTE? You know, but when I who reached knew? out, I'll tell you who knew. I knew. That's why I reached out to him. I reached out to Tom. I said, we got to make this happen. And where are all those people who thought they shirt. were smarter than nope. us, who've never played one question? in this game who said why would you pick up jt like that why would you because you respect the greats the reason we call ourselves rushmore is because we want to be one of the greats as a team kalinowski ain't laughing so hard anymore is he we take care of business we tko the first round and then we tko'd uh, lightning liz shannon miller and ethan Irwin. let me tell you something damn right how sweet it damn well is to finally beat ethan Irwin. i was one question away <laughs> last year Having a man in my corner, having a man by my side who has all the confidence in the world in himself and in the confidence of us helps us get over that line. And we handle business, but we ain't done here. The goal is to get to those belts, and we're trying to make statement wins along the way. And it's awesome knowing I've got a guy who's so chill riding alongside me who believes in himself and believes in what we can do as a team. Tom, this Absolutely. is another TKO for the exchange. You've got to be pretty uh, happy right now, despite whatever what is basement it, you're currently TKOs in. You know, I mean, I finally found the Wi-Fi that we needed, and I put the phone sideways as well, which works. I mean, <laughs> look, the bottom line is, you know, we're just doing what we told everybody we were going to do. Keep hanging minus ones on people. Sooner or later, people are going to have minus one scores. <laughs> now, look, we just keep doing that. These That's guys not how that works. Okay. Someone already had a minus one score this year. JT, unbelievable stuff. Roca, uh, the two, the, the steals from the classics, fantastic. They they complement each other so well. They're the best team in the league. Two of the best players in the, that league's ever seen. Um, and like John, to read what John was saying, people were like, oh, you're going to take JT3. He's not a keeper anymore. That guy's washed up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shows what, what you know. Saw. Again. That's right. That's All right, right guys. Again. We got to talk tomorrow, though. Danger Zone versus Deception. Yeah. Do I have to ask who you guys want to win? I think it's pretty obvious. Either way, you're going to be facing you be ready. a huge task. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you got to be pulling to face Danger Zone. Yeah. I, I listen. Tell I, him, I'll, Jay. 
I don't give them enough respect to be like, I want to play them. I want to beat them. I'll beat whoever makes it. Whoever's good enough to make it to the finals to play us, that's who we're going to beat. That's who yeah. we're going to play. I don't care which one of them it is. Either team. Either one of yeah, them. Yeah, well, you know my answer. I would love to play Ben and Dan. But, but Dan, you know, that's explosive. Those two guys together. You call yourself Danger Zone. Like I said before, it's a dangerous name to take on. And don't overlook Collins and Marisol McKee. You never know with those two. They have pulled upsets. And maybe yeah. Collins, after that loss to Dan, has got a little uh, voodoo who he wants to pull out on Dan Merle. Look, I know what it's like to have expectations right alongside Dan Merle and not meet them. It's a hard road. It's a heavy boulder to push up the hill. Will those two be able to do it? Look, no tournament has ever gone chalk. So it would be interesting if this is the upset before we face them in the final. And wouldn't that be a shock for them? Either way, I'm happy. But you know, deep down in this devilish heart of mine, I want to whip the crap out of Ben Bateman and oh, Dan yeah. Merle to show Sidecar, them Willie. who the better team is and then move on to those belts. One match at a time. But this is the focus here. We're coming up. And by the way, you better still, we might have to get new shirts. They might, they got my, they might have to start changing the name to the Finns TKO exchange, That's what I've been not saying. the Finns Stock Exchange. That's what I've been saying for a while. On the league, the keep Finns telling TKO us. TKO exchange. Keep, telling keep, us. keep making up excuses. Oh, the rookies are just playing other rookies. Keep making up your excuses. We'll just keep collecting points, and we'll see you at the finish line. Well, a Finns Stock Exchange with a misspelling on it with you two is quite perfect. <laughs> so I'm actually down for that kind of merchandising, Roka. You're a genius. Merchandising. Thank you very um, much. Nice, JT, your record in teams is 15 and 3. Woo! Woo. Did you say I that mean, again? Yeah. <laughs> That's damn impressive for me. 15 <laughs> and 3. Uh, <sighs> does this make you better than Snyder? Does Will, uh, will this win in getting back to and the belt? He only ever lost. Snyder? I think I've shown that. If I you think. go out there and didn't think I was as good as Jeff, I'm either as good or if not better. Also, if I miss a question, no, did you see that last time you won a belt? This was it. Part of Team B.O.B. Oh, B. Oh, he was just oh, like, oh. We lost this. Yeah, like, that's it. I'm cool and steady. He lost. Because I know I have a great the partner and I have a chance to win no matter what. McQueenie that's and what Sam Levine. Yep, well, yep. congratulations today, gentlemen. Tom, Thank you, you as well. You can go back to whatever it is you're doing. <laughs> we don't even want to know. I, there's probably criminal <laughs> liability. <laughs> can you please mute uh, yourself for the love of God so I can sign <laughs> off and there's not some clicking in the background? Uh, anyways, congratulations, gentlemen. Um, best of luck to you. I'm really excited about the future of this team, uh, despite you two being absolutely obnoxious. <laughs> <laughs> best manager in the business, Finstock. Take care, guys. All right. So as we uh, see, they are very, very confident, as they should be, because this is uh, this is some this is some matchup. These two, Roka and JT together. Who would have known? They're as good as they are. I mean, they're really, really good together. Um, they played it was good. Impressive. They trusted each other. Yeah, it really, it really was. And then, I don't know, man. There's, I, any one of these three teams, any one of these three teams that are left can win this whole thing. Absolutely, without a doubt. Now, while I was enjoying my carrot, while I was sympathizing with Jen for having to suffer through that interview, two things came to mind. One, JTE's doing impressions. Look out, Rich Little. And two, and more importantly, it doesn't matter who Rushmore is going to play because Christian, it doesn't, their, their teammate could have never played in a Schmodown before. They are going to manufacture a way to get it in their heads that the entire world is doubting them and it's all because of whoever they're looking at across the desk. They have that somewhat psychopathic drive to beat whoever's in front of them because they were personally wronged by them. Fact or fiction, that was the case that we saw today. And if that's the case, when next they match up in the championship of this tournament, Look out, Deception or Ben Bateman and Dan Merle. It's going to be a good one. Yeah, and it's also going to be a good one once we see Lightning Time out there again too, because it's such an early. This is this wasn't this isn't the ultimate promo. This is a tournament to just start to get the teams rolling, and they already got rolling. They're they're one and one. They are going to have another match probably uh, sooner than later. And the fact that they were able to do what they did, fight out around two and almost get back there in round three was impressive. But we're going to hear directly from Lightning Time and Sam Levine are standing by with Jen Sturger. Jen? Sam, I still see you with a smile on your face. I still feel like He's you've got to feel great about their performance today. You know, all things aside, it's really hard to compete with a team that does as well 
as Rushmore did in round one if you aren't going perfect in that first round. I mean, sure. I I think, I, I mean, yes, they did very well, but so did Lightning Time. I mean, I think at the end of the day, it was separated by what, one, maybe two points at the end of it? With that many points, you know, an availability of what, is it 18 points per team if you guys both go perfect? And to get as many as they did, I loved how they did in round one. And um, yeah, I mean, look, I, I have said this before, I will say it again. I will never ask anyone on The Usual Suspects for wins. I will only ever ask that you play your best game possible. And 100%, that's what these guys did today. And I, that will never make me sad. The outcome is secondary. They both played like absolute champions, and I love them for it. Ethan, you? Oh, look, you, we wouldn't even be here if Liz uh, didn't kick ass in the first game. I mean, I like I, I was nowhere in our first match. So, like, it, it, I tried to, you know, pick up the slack a little bit in this one. And, and uh, frankly, look, I've only ever once come back from spinning opponent's choice. It's just once you get that, I mean, what are you going to do? And I thought we actually handled ourselves pretty well. I mean, we, knew, we got more than I think, you know, we had any right to. So I felt good about that. You know, I, I, I what are you going to do? And look, it's, it, it's fine. It happens. Uh, I'll say, you know, it was, it's fun playing against those guys. Congratulations to you folks. Yeah, no, they, 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 they played great. They're great. They're great players. And yeah, it was just, I'm just personally disappointed in myself. And, and I think Liz, uh, here's the thing. Every player who's ever played the game at a high level, when you have that one game where you feel like it fell on you, that's a badge of honor in, in the Schmodown. It really is. And you can wear it for the afternoon, but beyond that, it's just silly. I know you played great, and Ethan knows you played great, and anyone watching the match knows you played great. And this is just part of the Schmodown, and part of being such an elite player is if you miss one question, you feel like that's the end of it. And I, I, can't, I can't let you do that in good conscience. See, there's even a dog. <laughs> It's a consolation prize. No, I'm there just keeping go. him from attacking the postman. Uh, anyways, <laughs> the above the stereotype, Kevin. Now. Anyways, uh, <laughs> Sam, one and one. Um, Christian's already saying that you're likely to get another rematch pretty soon. Who would you like to see them go up against? Honestly, at this point, I, I, I I'm not. We're not going to be in the in the habit of oh, well, we really want to take this person down and this person down. It's still early for lightning time, and I know they have a legacy they want to build. And that starts with match after match and victory after victory. And we are one and one. We're playing 500 ball right now. So let's get to that next match and keep it going. And the sooner the better, because I know these are hungry players. And uh, yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stand in their way. Whoever they want to face, they can face. Ethan, let's talk me. singles. You're facing Oyama next month. Finally, mm. um, how are you feeling about that match? And how are you gonna prepare for it? I don't know what you can do to prepare for Paul Yama. I mean, he it's Paul Yama. Come a, on. A multi hyphenate when it comes to his abilities. So I'm just going to go in there and see what I can do. But look, I've, you know, I watched him in New York Live. I've seen, you know, I saw him, you know, beat Snyder there. I've seen him play a bunch. Um, I like the guy a lot. You know, I think I got what it takes. But by the way, he's a guy I don't mind losing to. I, I really respect him. Yeah. Well, let's not, let's not put the cart in front of the horse. But, I mean, he's definitely one of the more impressive players that's come on the scene in the last couple of years. And, uh, yeah, best of luck to you with that one. And, like I said, Liz, please don't beat yourself up over this. You yeah. are the, – the leaps and bounds that you've grown in this game are just – they're very evident to everyone that watches you play and your passion yeah. for this game is very evident for everyone that watches you know you play so um take this loss as a learning experience and as a badge of honor and uh we'll go from there okay all right thank you and we're gonna send you more dog pictures <laughs> Back Heck to the yeah. Desk. So yeah, Jen, absolutely right. This, I mean, I think Jen and Sam said it. You know, when you're playing at this level and you get to that, and you, you're, you, especially after that that amazing win against the Outsiders, that it is the great players that say, ah, you know, if I would have just done this, I would have done that. And Liz Shannon Miller has certainly proven herself as one of the greats of the game right now. She's consistently pulling out these crazy pulls. Is that what we saw in the last match? What she was able to do in this match. And when you get opponent's choice, that's that's a tough one to overcome, as Ethan had said. Oh. But nonetheless, Rushmore taking the victory here. They move on to face the winner, and that happens tomorrow. The team 
of Deception. The former movie trivia showdown champion of the world, Adam the Disgrace. Coyote Collins, and his teammate, Lady Justice, Marisol McKee, go up against Danger Zone. The current five-time movie trivia showdown singles champion of the world, Dangerous, Dan Merle, and his partner, former champion, Ben the Boss Bateman. Lot of Trivia minds here that are just going to mark. You see what the the four of these people are going to do. Mm. I am so excited for this match, and to see that they're going to be in Rushmore now. Oof! This Oof. is uh, the, the stakes just got higher, my friend. This is not a bad Outside. tournament Oof. to be a fan and kick back and watch. And so we applaud everybody who hung out with us today and enjoyed it. And we think you'll probably be back for tomorrow's match as well. So just a friendly reminder, you can always check out the Movie Trivia Showdown Patreon. Select which tier is right for you today. You get to that $10 level, you get all the pay-per-views free all year long. And check us out on social media at The Schmodown. And go to The Schmodown Live. Dot com. Christian loves when I put a little bit of Southern twang in the Schmodown. It's the best. Schmodown. All right. So thank you to Mark Ellis. Thank you to our great team over at Skybound, to Jen Sturger, to Lightning Time, Rushmore, Sam Levine, and, and Bobby Gucci, I guess. That yep. camera was terrible. So thank you guys so very much. Really appreciate it. We'll see you back here again tomorrow. What is Mark doing? Okay. Well, um, like I said... The fence TKO exchange does it again. Another TKO win for the exchange. As a matter of fact, the only loss they had this entire year was to um, was uh, Frankie Alvarez beating Brother Lomas. And even then, it was such a close match. And bro it seemed for a moment they like Brother Lomas was going to take it. But uh, yeah, it's tough to go against the fence tuck exchange right now. Especially when they keep handing minus ones to people. Uh, speaking of points, I only answered six. Well, I mean, I knew the answers to six questions. Probably only answered about four of these, three maybe. But yeah, I, I'm not important right now. What is important here is that uh, Lightning Time uh, was beaten uh, by the uh, uh, the Rushmore. To be honest, I think Lightning Time is giving themselves too much of a hard time, especially Ethan. I think he played better than he gives himself credit for, especially in, in this match and even in the last match. Again, again, I think Liz is taking this uh, way too hard on herself. She played much better than I think she she says she did, but I mean that's just my opinion personally. But I mean, you just can't take a, this victory away from the exchange. Anyways, uh, I really enjoyed this match, and I only have one more, and this is the big one, the major one. It's Danger Zone versus Deception. I gotta go get myself ready for this match, and, uh, yeah. Schmo down! Hello again, everybody! I really hope you enjoyed this video, because I really enjoyed making it. So, if you like what you've seen here, please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more awesome content like this. So, until next time, guys, I'll see you guys next time.